everyone and welcome back to the Mad Art Gallery's virtual programming this week. My name is Tia Furstenberg, I'm the registrar here, and I'm also your host for the Secrets of the Vault series, where I select one artist a week and discuss a few of their artworks that we have in our permanent collection. I'm really excited to bring you the fifth video already this week. If you haven't seen the other four, they are on the Man Art Gallery's Facebook page and YouTube channel. So go check those out already if you haven't. Today, however, I have the pleasure of discussing the other half of the Hone and Hall donation that we received in 2015. So last week I discussed Beth Hone's work and this week I'm gonna be discussing her husband's McGregor Hone or Mac Hone. We have over 1,390 of his pieces in our permanent collection, so believe me, it was a little bit tricky deciding which pieces I was going to share with you today, but I did it. This is one of them, so without further ado, let's get started and talk a bit about Mac Hone. So this is the first piece I'm going to talk about. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a title or a date, but I can tell you that it is acrylic on paper. A little bit about Mac before we get started though. He was born right here in Prince Albert in 1920, and then him and his family moved to Saskatoon, and that's where he lived for most of his childhood and adolescence. Mac later went on to live in Vancouver in 1942 for a few years, he welded victory ships there and also reconnected with Beth and they married in 1944, moving back to Saskatchewan in 1947. And it was in Regina that Mac taught and developed one of the first fine arts high school programs at Central Collegiate with Lloyd Blackman and Jack Williams. And he taught there for many years. He really enjoyed being a mentor to students. Mac and Beth both traveled extensively throughout their lives, and so it would not be uncommon for Mac to have brought along paintings, supplies, and paper to document his travels along with Beth. And so as a result, we do have quite an extensive portfolio of his landscapes, which made it difficult, again, to pick one to show you, but I, I think that this one does a great job of representing sort of the whole of his landscapes, which are this sort of unconventional use of color and form and shape. So I think this one does a great job of showcasing all of those things. It's this, you know, brilliant red that is a color not typically associated with the landscape. So you could say that Mac was maybe more interested in the emotion or the feeling that the landscape evoked while he was painting it as opposed to representing it as he saw it. I really enjoy the sense of space in this piece and its simplicity, the fact that there's no horizon line no distinction between earth and sky, yet Mac has achieved a sense of depth with those trees in the background and the blue tree right in the foreground. It really helps to give a bit more dimension to the piece, which is otherwise this flat red. I also think the green and the red really play off one another well again because they are complementary colors right so they just pop. I also enjoy how Mac doesn't give you the full picture and allows the viewer to kind of use their own imagination and interpretation of the piece. I think that's so important to keep in mind that each viewer brings their own specific experience and ideas to an artwork. Moving on, this is the second piece I'm going to talk about. It is titled White Moth. It doesn't have a date and it is a woodblock print. So Mac definitely experimented with a lot of different medias and mediums throughout his artistic career 
but I think one that he really stuck to and really enjoyed was reductive printmaking. So wood blocks and lino cuts, those were his thing. He really enjoyed them. And this is a great example of one, one of the pieces that really caught my eye. And we can tell it's a wood block print because it has a bit of that grain left behind in the ink. If you look really closely into the, the background, that yellow green background, you can see some of that grain left behind. I think it's a really great sort of natural organic happening that takes place and something that speaks to Max, even his subject matter, because he tends to stick with nature and those things. For those of you who are perhaps unfamiliar with a woodblock print, it's just as it sounds, you get a flat piece of wood and then you typically use specific carving tools to create either thin lines or thick lines. And whatever areas you carve away, those are the areas that won't pick up ink and therefore will not show up on the print. So for instance, that includes the left arm of the figure, so all the way to the elbow, and then the figure's eye, his eyebrow, bridge of the nose, nose and mouth. Those are all the areas that Mac has carved away and doesn't want to show up and wants that background to come through. Another interesting thing with this print is the embossment that is used in the moth's wings. So that's also a similar process to a woodblock print. You just put the area you want embossed, you put that block on the back of the piece and then run it through the press so that it creates sort of a an indent and a low relief. And lastly, we have this piece. So unfortunately, this one also doesn't have a title or a date but I can tell you that it is acrylic and mixed media on board. I picked this as my last piece because I feel it encompasses a lot of different techniques and mediums and materials that Mac used throughout his career. There's definitely an element of painting in here, of sculpture, of printmaking, and drawing, you know, they all kind of come together in this piece, for me at least. I enjoy the allusion to a landscape almost with that horizontal line dividing the green from the deep blue. It almost gets you thinking about landscape for sure. And then also, why is that blue there? You know, is it is it sea? Are those shapes vessels? Are they boats? What about the two big shapes in the upper half of the piece? Or they almost look like shells. So, you know, these are sort of the assumptions and the ideas that a viewer can get from this piece. And that Mac hasn't necessarily laid out for us, right? I think this piece is definitely more about the elements that make up a specific artwork as opposed to the artwork itself so I think it speaks a lot to form and shape and color thinking about balance and what colors complement one another what don't what can you do to create depth and what makes something flat so there's a lot of different things that you can take from this piece and that's all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for joining me as I shared a bit about Mac Hone. I hoped you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite artwork was or if you have any other comments or questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you next Thursday.